Hello and welcome Funkoverse fans for another unboxing. I hope you've watched my uh, Space Jam unboxing where we opened the, uh, the last expansion, the Space Jam expansion. Today's expansion is uh, something super cool, something I've personally been waiting for since I saw the leaks coming out. It's the uh, Marvel 100 expansion. Marvel 100. Very cool. I didn't get the chase this time. I did not get the chase if you'll see... Uh, I got the regular Black Panther, the regular Pla Black Panther. The Chase one is uh, has got purple accents to uh, show that he's powered up. But uh, this is just the regular base version, and uh, let's let's get it open up. Let's get right to it. So, oh, give it the little the suction. Pow! Look at that. <clears throat> Isn't that sweet? Our figures, we got uh, Black Widow, Captain America, Black Panther, and uh, Iron Man. Let's start with the easy stuff. We got the dice, of course. This uh, comes with every preset pack. Comes with six dice. I personally have uh, switched to six-sided regular dice and just uh, played the roll 20 way. But if, if, you, uh, if you like these dice, you like these dice. They're very, very easy to play with. Let's look at... Ooh, new point markers. They're they're very red. Very red. Let's take an open here. Let's see if I can get a good view of one of these bad boys. It's very red. I like it. I mean, Kool Aid Man is red as well. It's like the Kool Aid Man one, but the Kool Aid Man has the uh, the little sparkles in it. This one doesn't have the sparkles, but it's still very red. I put all mine in a bag, <laughs> but we'll, uh, I don't know how you guys store your, your store your stuff, so it'd be, uh, great if you guys want to put links to, uh, how you store your things in the, in the end of this video, that'd be great. I'll take a look at all your storage ideas. This is the new attachments. These are the new attachments, I, I should say. This is the Vibranium controller. Ooh, get out of the bag. This is the Vibranium, and this is the uh, the PC Terminal. We'll talk about those a little bit later in the video, but... Whoa, here they are. Vibranium PC. Set those to the side for now. What's in this bag here? We have... Normal tokens. Ability tokens. We got Black Panther tokens. Let's take those Black Panther ones out. Take a look at these Black Panther ones a little closer. Oh, we got targets for uh, infiltrate the new infiltrate game type. It's not infiltrate. It's something else we'll look at in a minute. Normal, uh, normal player, player tokens. Normal player tokens. More Black Panther stuff. Any more? You get two Black Panther? You get three Black Panther tokens. We'll look at his ability card and we'll go over what those are in a second, too. But yeah, most of this stuff is just, uh... They give you the free... They give you four of these targets for free-for-all. We'll look at that game type. Where's the fourth one here? There it is. This white one. Okay. Yeah, most of this other stuff is just basic tokens. You get your uh, your exhaust tokens, enough for four characters. And you get your A, B, C, D for point markers. A, B, C, D. On the back side are the, the red-like um, point markers. It's the same, same color as the point markers. We got four stands. Ooh. Special stands this time, not just white and black. Let's take a look. We got a black one, I would say, for Black Panther, a red one for Iron Man, a blue one for Captain America. This leaves this white one for uh, for Black Widow, I would guess. But these two are definitely specific for these, and then you can flip-flop the, the white and the black. So let's do the fun part, friends. Let's pop these bad boys out. I push from the back. If you notice, I push with my, take my other hand and push from the back, right where their head is. And just kind of 
wiggle them out. They come out pretty easy. One. Give it a little push in the, in the spots. Oh, these ones have bases. If I, I found that I pushed in the base, it came out a little easier. So if you give it a little push behind the head, and then a little push behind the base. Come on, one out there, buddy. Come on, be nice. Iron Man's really in there. There we go. Come on out of there. Give it a little push on the head. Oh. Feel the pull. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just push from the back. Oh, man. These are in there tight. Oh, got it. Fresh. And you just push this plastic back. And you put it back in there. So here you have it. Here's these four. Now, they put the characters on bases already to make them actual game figures instead of figurines because it's a it was a merchandising thing that they had to do. So, they do have a spot in the bottom for a base. And they fit per, it's it's almost it fits very flush. Can't even tell. I mean, you could spin it around and then just kind of kind of line it up looks very good I mean if you there's no extra hole on the base to do like a hoverboard underneath this base so I mean you would just put the you would just put the hoverboard in the, into the hole I would say I don't have my hoverboard on me right show you but let's put bases on them and see what they look like one two Three. Four. I don't think they look too bad with the extra bases. There are people who take the uh, the characters off the bases. There are ways if you want to join the Discord. I'll put a Discord link at the end of the video. And you can come join the Discord and see what people are doing. All sorts of crazy things with these. But uh, the bases don't bother me too, too much. I understand why they had to do it, so I'm not going to let it bug me. Some Captain America. I definitely like the way they look. They're very, they're very crisp looking. All right, let's set them aside and see what's in the bag. We've got some new uh, cooldown tracks. Let's see what the art is on these. The art's always great. The red, like the uh, cooldown tokens. They really went with a, a hard red color for this uh, this pack. It's almost like a Jurassic Park looking one, I would say. Very similar. And then uh, the back side is uh, a very Captain America versus uh, Iron Man feel. But yeah, that's cool. I like them. Let's see what else we got. We got uh, game type cards for the maps. We'll keep those with the maps when we show off the map here. Let's put those down here. We've got a whole bunch of cards. These must be the normal player cards. If you guys don't know about... Uh, oh, what did I hit? Oh, sorry about that. Put it up on my desktop. There we go. If you don't know about the uh, the normal player cards, these are your ba your basic characters. If you don't have um, uh, all the e expansions to play with 3v3, this this expansion gives you 2v2 if you wanted to play it. If you wanted to play 3v3, you can add one of these basic normal token characters in and, and play 4v4 or 3v3, however you want to play. They give you a, a couple of them, four it looks like. Iron Drone, Shield Agent, Shield Operative. I think it's so you can play um, 2v2, 4 ways, uh, free for all. I'll show you that in a second. I think that's why they give you 4 of these and then 4, four characters. So you can play 2v2 with 4 people. The actual characters themselves here. Big Iron Man. Iron, the uh, the power creep is real in, these, in this set here. I wish I could get that to... Uh, focus up 
I can do this all day, stand up or do an action, then do an extra action. So you can stand up and do an action, um, kind of like Darkwing Duck. But, or you can just do two actions, which is pretty nice. Um, the shield throw is range three, challenge one. And then you roll one extra dice for each ability token on your cooldown track. And then no you move is challenge three, and then a, a push. You can push one square. And then, what does it say about his trait here? Can I get that to focus? Come here. Why will you not focus? Well, his trait is uh, just the three colors. You can see it down here. He gets three, three color tokens. Kind of like Morty gets two yellows and a red. He gets red, yellow, and blue. It's Captain America. Black Widow. Pretty big time as well. Um, move one, challenge four, and a push. Very, that's crazy. So you get to move one, challenge four, and then you get to push one. Um, Widow's Bite is challenge three. If you win, shift an ability token on your opponent's cooldown up one. A little, uh, little head game with your opponent. <clears throat> if you're playing against, like, a, uh, a Voldemort, and they, they're trying to keep their grays down, and you just want to... Keep keep bugging him. Throw that gray up one more and make him wait another round. Covert Ops is uh, is really crazy. For a three gray, you can swap positions with an ally on the map. Um, you can stand the Black Widow up and the ally up. Black Widow can do this while knocked down. So if you and if you are playing Black Widow and your your um, ally is knocked down and Black Widow's knocked down, you stand them both up and swap places. That's pretty. It's pretty crazy. It's a different take on the uh, the the stand-up ability of maybe Captain America or Batman or Darkwing Duck. Her trait is after Black Widow does a challenge, she can do a move one. So she can challenge somebody and say you're doing against uh, Marty McFly. Uh, Marty's trait is he gets to attack if you lose, if you're challenged and the, the other person loses. So if you're trying to dodge Marty's attack, you use Black Widow, you go up, and if you miss your attack, you can just back up one and, and dodge his attack, which is pretty cool. He's kind of a, or she's kind of a, a, a counter. All right, on to the next one here. Black Panther. <clears throat> Black Panther's blue-yellow. He's got Panther Leap. Choose a rival within two squares that Black Panther can see and place him adjacent to them. Give Black Panther two energy tokens. The energy tokens were the thing in the box. They're these purple tokens. He comes with these purple tokens. And then you give the Black Panther the tokens based on his uh, his trait. So we'll work down to his trait. But that first one, uh, the Panther <laughs> Leap, lets you choose a rival uh, two squares away and uh, place them adjacent and get two uh, energy tokens. Um, his second ability here is Kinetic Energy Burst. Do a challenge two to each adjacent rival. You may discard an energy token to push each target one square. So if you uh, put a token on him, you can push a, um, you can push rivals after you challenge two to all of them. So it's like an AoE challenge two to any adjacent rivals, plus a, plus a push if you uh, spend the token. Wakanda Forever is three yellow, and Black Panther or a standing, standing ally does a move one. Repeat this two more times. So for three yellow, an ally or Black Panther can move uh, three spaces. The trait is uh, the Black Panther Vibranium Suit. When Black Panther is challenged, give him an energy token. At the start of Black Panther's turn, you may discard two energy to stand up or do an extra action. So you can spend the tokens to push people with Kinetic Burst. Or you can spend the tokens at the beginning of your turn to stand up or do an extra action, which is really cool. So you're going to want to be moving around with that Panther Leap, grabbing the tokens. I mean, you get tokens from being attacked, but you're going to be wanting to move around and use, use the tokens to do extra actions for sure. I think the extra actions might be better than the push from Connect, Connect Energy Burst. I'm not 100% sure how it works. Haven't been able to play him yet. Alright. Last but not least, Iron Man. Here is the monster of the pack. Iron Man is just... He's a beast. 
override protocol even if it costs four you get to do three basic actions pretty crazy I mean Black Panther gets to do the extra basic action for um, the energy tokens but just to be able to do it for four at the end of override protocol you can uh, you got to do a challenge two to yourself which is kind of a you know a little bit of a drawback kind of bring they, they know that the move is o is pretty OP so they try to give it a little downside uh, repulsor blast is range three challenge two push one man that's crazy range three challenge two is is always good a couple of characters have that but the, the push is very good for um, like a control game type or a flag game type it makes it more um, diverse in its its usage because it has the push Unibeam range five challenge four. Oh my word Good Lord Iron Man that's a powerful blast there. So in basketball, you can blast people off the line. If you look at the basketball map, it's about five squares away. It's pretty crazy. A range of five to be able to knock somebody down at your flag and still be five squares away from your flag. Maybe grabbing a point. A range of five is, is unseen so far. Uh, the trait here, I know it's kind of tough to read, but... Uh, oh, I had it for a second. After Iron Man does an ability that uses the last ability token of its type in your ability pool, shift the token on your cooldown track down one. So if you do um, Override Protocol or Unibeam and it's your last red or gray spent in your pool, then you get to move something down. So if you spend a, a Unibeam and it, it's your last gray, it technically costs three because you, you could technically move it down. That's pretty good. It's trying to kind of get your tokens off the cooldown track a little bit get him to move a little faster because he's pretty heavy four two four it's pretty it's, it's a little heavy but the, the moves are worth it to be able to knock somebody down from five squares away or to be able to do three basic actions that's that's huge all right let's take a look at uh the hack the terminal computer and the the, re the retreat the vibranium at the beginning of the game, if you take these as your attachment, say you don't want to take the Batarang or the Cheesecake or the Fog Juice, you take one of these, and your opponent gets to set them down in their starting area. And this is your attachment for the game. If you take uh, Retrieve the Vibranium, let's take a look at it, I can't. Your character may interact with the Vibranium to secure it. While the Vibranium is secured, your characters roll one extra die on the first non-range challenge they, they do each turn. So if you have a melee team, this is huge. You get to roll an extra dice for every uh, melee attack you do, as long as you retrieve the Vibranium. So if you go to your opponent's side of the map, retrieve the Vibranium, then all your melee attacks, the first melee attack you do, gets, uh, gets a bonus dice. That's pretty big. I mean, it's not as good as Felix uh, Felicus, however you pronounce that, to get the crit, or... Um, I don't know. This one's, this one's pretty handy. I don't know. Somebody might have to tell me how, how to use this... To, to be a, a huge bonus, but it seems like kind of a pain to go all the way to the base to uh, to get an extra dice. Maybe a smaller map, a battle type game type. So let's retrieve the vibranium. Let's hack the terminal. Your characters may interact with the terminal to secure it, just like the vibranium. While a ter terminal is secured, at the start of the round, you may shift a token on your cooldown track down to... At the start of the round, you may shift a token on your cooldown track. Okay, so you make it to your opponent's base, you get the terminal, and then at the start of every round that you you have the terminal hacked, um, you you shift a cool a, a token down to. Man, that's it's pretty big. If it's late game, I mean maybe this is more of a late game. I can see how you use this late game where um. In flags, if you get to their your opponent's base and you you're trying to ship, you've used all your tokens to get there. You grab this and your tokens get shifted down. That'd be pretty pretty big. I could see how this is used. The melee attack on the vibranium, I'm a I'm a little uh, more skeptical of, but the terminal seems pretty cool. And again, you, these start in your opponent's base, and if your opponent's base is full at the start of the game, it goes adjacent. All right. Man, what a huge pack this has been. Last but not least, let's take a look at the uh, the new maps. We've got the Shuri's Lab map, which has Scrimmage, which is a brand new game type. It's a 
four-player free-for-all map where the scrimmage tokens, or the, uh, what do they call them in this, the target markers, I don't know, you can see them in the corners, the target markers, can be attacked from range. What do they have? A defensive, they have a defensive one. They have a defensive one, and, uh, you, your opponents can attack them from range, and I think you get, you get one point if, uh, you're, if you're attacking somebody who has more points than you, and you get two points, or no, you get two points for attacking somebody who has more points than you, and one point if you're attacking somebody who is behind you in points. So there's pretty good comeback mechanics in this. I'm really excited to play this. Shuri's Lab scrimmage. Very cool. Uh, the other map is another free-for-all map on Shuri's Lab. This is Triumph, a lot like the, uh, the Triumph in the Game of Thrones pack. pretty cool you can see the uh see the lines those block those block the starting areas from each other and then you got to get to the middle point and you get points for controlling the middle and there are four pillars like in the game of thrones map i don't know if you can see them they're very small pillars there in the middle Let's see what the other side has it has the helicarrier helicarrier leaders kind of looks almost like a stadium you can see the seats the seats are the are the blockers, and the starting areas are these two lines, these two lines. That's that's cool. It's kind of new, and then the points are uh, out here in the uh, out here in the stadium, kind of. It's pretty cool. Leaders is one of my favorite game types. Leaders and flags, so this this will definitely be getting some play. And then oh siege, okay siege is new. As well as the the four player uh, the four player scrimmage, siege is new. What do you do in siege? At the end of the round, if the defender okay, so the uh, there's an offense and defense, and if you're in the starting area, you can only melee. So if you're trying to get into the starting area, you can use ranged in, and then once you're in the starting area, you can uh, you can only use melee. So at at the end of the round, if the defender has at least one character in the melee area, you gain one point. One additional point if they have more characters. Okay, so you're trying to control the melee area here. And you get more points based on how many, how many more people you have in there. It's kind of like control, but um, they give somebody a melee starting area. It's very cool. I'll have to play a couple games of this to really get a feel for how it plays. I like the idea of it, though. Something new. So they've come out with uh, Croquet, Basketball, and now Siege. Very cool. I like it a lot. This uh, this pack definitely has a little bit of a power creep. I'm definitely uh, wanting to see how these guys match up against some of the other more power ca powerhouse characters in, uh, in some of the expansions. Let me know what you guys think at the uh, in the comments. I'm your buddy JD. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this this uh, this video. And uh, man, this this pack's pretty crazy. I hope I don't see you guys playing Iron Man against me when uh, when I see you on Tabletop Simulator.